course of doing it his way, the right way. For many, Frank Beamer is the very embodiment of Virginia Tech's high standards. Ask Coach what he's most proud of. He'll tell you consistency. And now for these Hokey players, that means they have to finish strong. 22 straight years, they've made a bowl game. Now in Beamer's final season, two more wins are needed to keep the streak. It won't be easy. On the road at Georgia Tech, Justin Thomas, one of the most dangerous playmakers in the game. And a celebration of past glory is fueling a big night in the ATL. Glad you're with us from here at Bobby Dodd Stadium as this is the ACC on ESPN. For one of these proud programs, this could set up to be a November surge towards the postseason. For the other, pressure's going to mount. Virginia Tech, their legendary coaches' retirement tour is underway. Georgia Tech, a team that has already pulled off one of the most memorable moments of this season. As we say good evening, everybody. Joe Tessitore and David Pollock with you. Jesse Palmer has the night off. Twelve days ago, Frank Beamer announces his retirement to the world. Legendary coach with that streak of 22 straight years for a bowl game. They have to win two of their next three to be eligible. Georgia Tech has a streak too. 18 straight years they've gone to a bowl. They've got to win out to become bowl eligible and get to those six wins. I always love this as an X's and O's matchup, specifically with the defensive coordinator, Bud Foster for Virginia Tech. He's got lots of experience against this option. He, he does. He's seen it since 2008. He's got a lot of experience with Paul Johnson. And he's very innovative. He comes up with some funky defenses and he'll change personnel in a heartbeat. A couple years ago, he had his corner Fuller playing, playing outside linebacker. Does a great job, mix it up, looks up front, confusing the quarterback, confusing Paul Johnson. So it's a chess match between two great minds. Bud Foster always wins a lot of matchups. In this atmosphere tonight, he's going to have to. And of course, a lot of talent when it comes to the quarterback position for Georgia Tech. Listen, Justin Thomas was a record setter a year ago. Yep. You know what they did in the postseason, going to the Orange Bowl and winning that. This year, they're young. They're dealing with injuries. But he is still a home run threat every time he's got the ball in his hands. He, he's their biggest and, and best weapon. So they have to find ways to use him. But somebody else has to step up and make plays. This season, it's been him. It's a lot of freshmen, a lot of youth up front in the offensive line. You get Florida State game, low scoring game. You know about the special teams touchdown. How about the other one? Justin Thomas breaking tackles. He's only five foot eleven, but he's built. He's pretty thick, so he can run through tackles, but he also makes you miss. He's the engine that makes this thing go. That was a great scene moments ago is Georgia Tech publicly thanked Virginia Tech's Frank Beamer for his contributions to the game. Haley Harton is with Coach. Well, Coach, as you run out onto the field with your team for the first time since announcing your retirement, how do you describe the emotions? Well, I'm excited. Uh, you know, we got to make it some a great football game. That's what I'm going to miss. These guys over here and a uh, good program across the field and the competition. That's that's what it's all about. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. 29 years. I got a road named after him up at campus. Beamer Way. The athletic department address is now 25 Beamer Way. It's produced so many champions on and off the field. And looking to finish strong. Make his way to the postseason one more time. Virginia Tech won the toss. They deferred. Georgia Tech will receive. And Joey Slive, big leg, will be kicking away for the Hokies on a really mild and beautiful evening as he puts it through the end zone. Did some choppy waters for Georgia Tech after an outstanding season a year ago. The loss is mounting to Notre Dame. North Carolina Clemson was the one game they really felt like they were out of Pitt hit a long field goal at the end for a win there and then you all know what happened the miracle on Techwood against Florida State a blocked field goal return for a touchdown for Paul Johnson's squad here's Prattville Alabama's Justin Thomas in that tech spread option attack Marcus Allen is opening up the game as the B-back. And he gets the call and a good gainer for a gain of eight and a half. So the Orange Bowl MVP 
from last year, Justin Thomas. What's been the story this year? Youth, a lot of youth around him. Lost two NFL receivers last year. He was experienced in this system. Lost his A-backs. He's played with seven of them this year with injuries. and So he's still been dynamic, but players around him in the uh, offensive line up front has been so youthful, they've made a lot of mistakes. Second and one, here is Thomas to pass. And right down the middle, wide open is Ricky June. Big gainer, first and goal on a pass of Thomas to June. We talk about him, it's usually running the ball, but look at June right now, number two, come down, face him. Let's him go. He thinks it's run. This triple option, so much run, run, run. You're thinking about playing your run responsibility. Facing gets beat, but a great job by June selling that run block down and then blowing by. Good looking sophomore, big body receiver from St. Joe's Regional up in New Jersey. 58 yard reception. Here's the pitch now, Clinton Lynch. And he lowers his shoulder and spins just inside the five yard line. I think Justin Thomas has been looking for somebody outside to be to be his go to guy and June has stepped up as that guy with that big body you talk about big bodies it, it's always like that attack and you go back to Demarius Thomas and Stephen Hill all those guys six foot three thick guys that have to be able to block and make plays on the outside. Second and goal. Straight up the middle and touchdown Georgia Tech. job look at the big splits by the line watch the right guard Joe get up to the second level and block Matua Puapa Georgia Tech Paul Johnson takes a lot of pride in his two-minute drives he says we might be a slow pace offense there's another two-minute drive for a touchdown think of them grinding the clock long possessions but he always brings that up that they can strike quickly when they do As Harrison Butker puts it through quick strike indeed as Marcus Allen with the rushing touchdown it was set up by this guy Ricky June longest pass play on the year for Georgia Tech as coach Beamer's defense gives way early on here and that's the big play Ricky June you see him just that little bit coming down the line Joe looking like he's gonna block and this offense is so much about run all the time. And that's all you've been preached is run fits, run fits. Make sure you play the play. Right Duke makes the big play down the field. They do that, this offense is impossible to stop. They get the passing game oh, no going doubt. consistently. It's also the longest pass allowed this year by Virginia Tech. Frank Beamer, what a career. Really defining this program, raising it to new heights. His career, 277 victories. And you know the success he's had of winning titles. No matter which conference as they elevate it to the ACC. The bowl streak is on the line as they have four wins right now. Looking to claim two more before the season finishes up. 93 NFL draft picks as well he's produced over the course of his years. It was much hyped how they started the season with the game against Ohio State. They led at the half in that game, but then Michael Brewer was injured. The Duke game was an absolute thriller. Four overtimes as Duke scored a two-point conversion for the win back on October 24th. And Michael Brewer, who missed five games this year, broke his collarbone in that Labor Day game showdown against Ohio State. Surgery. He's overcome a lot to be back out there as that was batted down by Rook Chungong. And this offense is a lot different with him, but Joe, he's traveled a long road, hasn't he? Sure has. This is a kid who grew up in Texas, started off his career at Texas Tech, and made his way to Virginia Tech. And he worked so hard this offseason to prepare and then injured against Ohio State and back now looking to finish up strong here in November.
McMillan on the carry. And he struggles to spin his way back for just a gain of a yard beyond the line of scrimmage. Trayvon McMillan, a redshirt freshman who's coming off a career high in rushing attempts against a good D.C. defense when he had 105 yards. Yeah, and he's the guy that, that can really make it go and help. Help Brewer get him in good situations. Very decisive, gets downhill quick, breaks tackles, pretty explosive. This is the down and distance, though, where you got to look out for number seven, Bucky Hodges, on the outside, the big-time playmaker slot right here six foot seven matchup nightmare big time talent sophomore from Virginia Beach he is flexed out third down and eight here's Brewer with time well covered as Brewer running out of options and then just throws it away I don't care who you had playing quarterback on that one it could have been Joe Montana where are you gonna throw the football no pass rush, good protection up front by the line. They bring a four-man rush, but look at Brewer. Where do you want him to throw the football? Everybody's locked down. Then he, has to, then he scrambles outside the pocket to try to make a throw, but great job by this Georgia Tech defense. Get it back to your offense after that quick two minutes or less score, too. A.J. Hughes on to punt the senior, well-experienced. Second all-time in the ACC in total punt yardage as Jamal Golden is back to return, but this will bounce out of bounds. Georgia Tech off to the start they were looking for. Thomas with the big pass. Allen the touchdown. 7 zip. Tech. The Army Silver Wings delivered the game ball from high above Bobby Dodd Stadium pregame. For these two teams that have combined to win nine of the ten Coastal Division titles. You've done that yet, Joe? You've jumped out of one of those yet? Please, David. Please. <laughs> no dice? I don't even go on the rides at Disney. Stop it. <laughs> I'm the gift shop guy with my daughter. So Thomas and the Tech offense back out there. This is Willis trying to get to the corner. Isaiah Willis checking with Haley. Guys, you've got to play with emotion. That was Charlie Wiles, Virginia Tech's defensive line coach to his unit after that last possession. You know, we all heard Frank Beamer and his coordinators tell us in the wake of his announcement they were trying to manage that emotion and get back to business as usual. But that defensive line coach calling for emotion from his players. Yeah, no doubt. You need emotion. You need smart assignment football for this challenge there. As Daddy Nicholas and that crew now facing a second and five opposite Georgia Tech. Here's Thomas again to pass. And this was well covered downfield as Donovan Riley was hooked up with Brad Stewart. And they're going to have to pass the football. They're going to have to have success because this defensive line up front, their best players on this Virginia Tech defense all are up front. I mean, Luther Matty's a fifth-year senior. Daddy Nicholas, a fifth-year senior. A senior. Kenna Canham is another guy that's a fourth-year guy. They've seen this option several times. They know how to play it. The youth of this Virginia Tech defense is in the secondary. They can make a lot of money running between the tackles with those big cats. No doubt. Third and five. here as Willis makes one spin and then out towards midfield as he will move the chains for the Yellow Jackets. And it's so tough because third and five is still a running, running down for Georgia Tech. We're watching. They're going to make you to defend the option first with Allen. And 54, Matua Boako has to do a good job at that linebacker spot. You have to see that. Scrape over the top and go play your position. You can't be looking at anything else. you got to do your job. He gets beat there on that one. Marshall gets the call. Just again, maybe a half a yard as Luther Maddie cut him down. Of course, last year, uh, just a season to remember, and this year, the ups and downs, but yet still the big notch on the belt against Florida State. For Paul Johnson and Thomas, who had a big drive, eight plays, 45 yards that he engineered against the Knowles with a game tying field goal before. What ended up being one of the plays of the year that won it. Here's Thomas now as he follows Marshall. Beautifully designed up. 
option play that time as he goes for 11 and a half yards and a first down. And Bud Foster is not afraid to move his defensive line. Watch him, he slides away from where the ball's going. All the line slides away. Look at that gap that opens right back up. Everybody's staying out wide. Georgia Tech running the ball out wide a lot. Good job by Thomas finding the lane right up the gut. Following the B back, who instead of becoming the dive option, becomes the lead, lead blocker, blocker there. Yep. And those are the little things that Paul Johnson does that people don't realize. It's not just the triple option. There's, there's a lot of variety in the plays they run. Triple option, not the correct descriptive, as we've learned so many times through the years. Here they go again. This time he fakes the pitch, keeps himself before he is taken down by Matua Puaka. And a lot of times you want the quarterback to carry the football. You want to get hits on him, and he's usually not as dynamic. But Justin Thomas is... He's making this thing go. He's been doing everything, and everything's dead. The production's down because the people around him this year has been young and haven't been making plays. But look at that difference between 2014 and 2015. Almost 70-something yards a game difference. Thomas under center now for second and six. As Willis on the pitch here. Good cut block. And an offensive lineman to pave the way in front down to the 20. As that was Trey Clock, the redshirt freshman, getting out in front of that run. And when you're a corner in these games, it's not fun. And Edmonds just found out he's got guys flying at him. You got to be able to contain on the outside, far left side. Watch Edmonds come down through here. You, you're outside. You're a corner. You got to stay outside. You can't let the ball go outside of you. Doesn't do his job. All those guys are inside. Turn the ball back inside where all your help is. It's in a fun game for corners, Joe. They like covering receivers. They don't like coming up and hitting. Got to really get involved on a night like this. Yes, sir, you better. First down at the 20. Good job penetrating on the inside as they were able to meet Marshall. That was Nigel Williams, the junior from Richmond. That was surging awesome. In. That was like a submarine, man. You see him? Comes flying in there. Great job. Look at that. Laying out. Got low and then flew his body right into That's not Marcus a little human Marshall. either. He's 6'4", no. six, six, 300 pounds. Sets them back. I'm cheating him a pound. He's 299. Late, I'm sure he had a biscuit or two for lunch, David. Don't worry about that. Those summer media guide weights are never the same come November. Thomas, as he gets about four yards that time, the flag comes in at the end of that play. He can was able to get to Thomas. Personal foul, grabbing the face mask on the defense, number four. Penalty is half the distance. Automatic first down. You see Cannon coming in from the right side. Not really sure. He didn't, he didn't grab it, but you put your hands up there, they're going to call it. He didn't. A lot of times you see that, he grabs it, turns the head. It wasn't real violent, but he did put his hand on the face mask, and they're going to call that. So another first and goal situation for Georgia Tech as they have marched down the field after that fumble recovery. There's Marshall on the inside as he gets a little extra light right, a late drive against Matua Puwako. He can him and Matua Puwako wrapping him up at about the four yard line there. Tell you what, if this offense, you've seen it throw the football, you've seen them attack the edges, if they get that going up the middle, it's going to be a long day for Virginia Tech. That's the strength of their defense. They got their defensive line is the best part that they have. They have a lot of experience against the triple option. You've seen it so many years with so many guys of experience. They got to shut that inside down first. He's looking on. It's been a long drive for him after he fumbled watching his defense retreat a bit here. Here's the pitch now. Clinton Lynch. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. all week all you want with the triple option it's hard when people are running and flying at your legs and you see a great job on the outside tech getting to the edge getting guys on the ground we saw Edmonds earlier not making a play right there he had an opportunity too it's just tough you can't practice you can't simulate it Georgia Tech's offense is rolling early local kid good looking athlete Clinton Lynch his fourth rushing touchdown of the year 
It started with the turnover as Cam Phillips gave it away. Jamal Golden pounced on it. And then all eight plays on the ground and into the end zone. Brewer to pass, and he gets it to the outside to Isaiah Ford, who made the first man miss, and then pushed out by Lawrence Austin. He could do that. He's a big play guy on the outside. Isaiah Ford, you've seen Bucky Hodges. You've seen Cam Phillips with the big fumble, but they're young out there with sophomores. A lot of sophomores on the outside, but they got plenty of skill to take advantage of. Here's Nick Millen, and a good effort will give them a first down out to the 38-yard line. Try to swing that time of possession back your way, give your defense a rest, but at the same time, you also want to get your tempo going and try to wear out a thin Georgia Tech defense. They don't play a ton of guys. Ford motions out to the single side now, top of your screen, and they will give it to him. Looking for some blocks, and he weaves his way back to the original line of scrimmage. So a couple of rushing touchdowns for Georgia Tech. Clinton Lynch and Marcus Allen giving them a 14-zip lead as we look at some of the brave men and women from around the world showing off their Georgia Tech colors. This week, we honor all of America's heroes in our nation's armed forces. Georgia Tech's defensive line, particularly inside, is weak right now. Their team leader in defensive tackle, Adam Gotsis, left the UVA game with a knee injury. He had surgery on Tuesday. He actually came to the facility today as his team finished their yellow jacket walk to welcome the guys as they walked in the facility. He's now back at home cheering his team on from there, guys. Yeah, and Kelly, as we were talking about all week, they also are absent with Jabari Hunt. And now, saw a moment ago, P.J. Davis the trainers out there dealing with them. They pick up the blitz and just a pitch and catch to Cam Phillips. Crosses midfield, weaving his way and picking up blocks is Cam Phillips. What a play. There it is again, short passing game. These receivers can make plays. They put Cam Phillips in a short motion across the field. Shows you it's man coverage, gets him matched up on the linebacker. They don't pass off on the defense. Miscommunication, just watch him in the open field. He can do that all night. Isaiah Ford can do that. Bucky Hodges can do that. Get these playmakers in space. That's where they operate best. 45-yard play. Thanks to Cam Phillips. That's Trayvon McMillan. Right here on the direct snap. And he slips his way through the line to the 15. Cam Phillips. Matha High up there in Maryland. Pretty good night so far. Three targets, three receptions, 64 yards. Of course, he did have the one moment with fumble. a fumble. And now making amends here as a good-looking drive as McMillan will make it a first and goal, Virginia Tech. They are a desperate need to get on the board here. The shotgun run game is what they've done best, too. Being able to hand the ball off to McMillan quickly. Wide receiver screen, four to the inside. He goes, and he is brought down by Golden. You only get so many opportunities against Georgia Tech. You have to take advantage of it. That's what they're looking to do, cash in here. This is a lot of times where they look towards Bucky Hodges. We've talked about it a lot of times. He's going to play receiver now at the top of your screen. Number seven up here, six foot seven. Up against the 5'11", D.J. White, who's already made some big plays tonight. But they look for seven down here. Stack formation again as Brewer splits out. Direct snap McMillan once again. They run power with McMillan as he drives ahead, and it'll be third and goal from the two. When you see Brewer and McMillan lining up right next to each other, often you'll see that split formation leaving the Wildcat. And I don't, I don't think they're good enough up front, Virginia Tech, to just push people around. They have to do that. They need to have, run the quarterback and pick up a, an extra blocker up front. This might be four-down territory anyway, so I wouldn't be surprised if they do run the football again here. Cheryl Beamer looks on. Hands folded, hoping for the best here. Play clock down to four. to the outside. Can he get there? Touchdown, Virginia Tech! Fourth rushing touchdown of the year.
for Trayvon McMillan. Talk about Bucky Hodges being that flex tight end. Ryan Malik is not. Watch him on the right, uh, left side of your screen right here, 88. Watch the block he has on White. Watch it. Talk about moving somebody off the line of scrimmage so your guy can make a play. McMillan with some good moves, some good blocking. Good answer by Virginia Tech's offense. Good looking drive. They went 80 yards in 10 plays. They got a big effort from Cam Phillips. Made up for that turnover earlier as he was able to find 45 yards each and every way and then finished off with McMillan. And the Beamer family row. Something to celebrate. 29 years at Virginia Tech, strutting the sidelines, wearing the headset. Frank Beamer, hoping his team can deliver on a couple more wins here in November and get one more chance at the postseason. Trailing by a touchdown here at Georgia Tech. As Marshall will take a knee in the Vic. As Thomas gets free and then dragged down by the jersey there. As Chagag was taken for a ride, 16-yard gain. I think Big Beamer's happy to play this offense, but look at those wins at a school. 277 at Virginia Tech. Before he got there, they had one 10-win season. He's had 13 in his tenure. That's pretty amazing. Well, what's amazing is the list of the names that Frank Beamer will forever be next to. All-time legends. Good to see Marcus Allen back out there. He left moments ago when he was banged up. Luther Matty makes the tackle. You know, Beamer mentioned to us when we met with him yesterday, explaining when he knew it was time to go. He said, you know, in preseason one day, for the first time, he was lying in bed and he said, why in the world am I doing this? This is a grind. And he said that's the first time that ever popped into his mind and he started thinking about it. And here we are now. 12 days removed from him announcing to the world that this will be the final run. 16 straight running plays for Georgia Tech. That pitch was a little dangerous as he was able to get it to Snotty and Matua Puaka comes up with another tackle. This is what Bud Foster does. It's pretty amazing. Watch Matua Puaka. He usually plays about five yards deep. Against this option, they'll have about seven yards so he can see and he can get out wide and that tackle can't get to him. It's a wrinkle that Bud Foster likes to use and a heck of a job running that play down. Third down and 11. First time they were passing 17 straight, and pressure gets to him. There was nowhere for Thomas to go to as Deion Clark was rushing in as well as Luther Matty. And I'm not sure what you want Justin Thomas to do right there. No. I mean, that was a it was a jailbreak. And this Georgia Tech offensive line struggled all year protecting him. He's already been sacked this year on the season more than he was last year and hit more. And great, great answer by Bud Foster to get to stop the bleed and get the ball back to your offense and try to tie this ball game up. Strowman back out there for Rodwell's punt. This is end over end. Does not take a good bounce at all as it bats around just inside the 30 yard line. Bobby Ross and George O'Leary, of course, 25 years ago, the co national champs. Georgia Tech history is being celebrated tonight. Able to have dinner with Coach Ross last night. Boy, can he talk some ball, tell some great stories. A week where they remember that unbeaten Georgia Tech title team. As Virginia Tech gets rolling with McMillan. Good start on first down out to the 47 yard line. A gain of 23. McMillan is a fast back, man. He sticks his foot in the ground. He sees things and he goes really quickly. He's starting to get rolling, the quick passing game getting rolling. Now Brewer's going to take a shot downfield and just beyond Isaiah Ford. And we talked about Brewer. He's good at seeing things pretty quickly and making shots, but again, D.J. White on the coverage. We've seen him all over the field. 
Isaiah Ford had a beat. Bucky Hodge had a beat earlier. Two shots down the field that Brewer have, has not connected on. It's the last step for him. He does all the stuff intermediate, he does the quick stuff. He'll scramble and buy time, but Brewer has to be able to take those shots and make them if this offense is going to take it to the next level. Second and ten. Look out to Ford. White versus Wisdom. But you, you see why this offense can be so hard? McMillan gets going. You hit Ford short. So White can't come up and crowd him at the line of scrimmage because he don't want to get beat deep. And then they take shots. If you could really, if you could hit those deep balls, it would be impossible because the weapons they have on the perimeter. 32 now. Rogers in the backfield with Brewer. Looking for Ford, who is running a shallow and then has to come back this time. And that is Phillips on the play extended by Brewer. He was tracking Ford, running underneath, and then had to look for another option. And Brewer's not Mike Vick, but he does a great job with his scrambling and keeping his eyes down the field. That's a tough throw, man. Rolling to your right to be able to do that and convert the first down. And then a good effort from Phillips great job coming back to the ball by Phillips. sure was as you can see Phillips is reaching for the lower portion of his left leg see he has to slide down in there he gets stepped on right there you see the weight of the defensive back coming in at the end of the play there and pinning him does he have possession prior to going out of bounds here. Remember, the ruling on the field was it was a complete Elbows down catch. there. See his left elbow? He's got the ball. The left elbow hits his, and shoot, his rear end's on the ground, too, so. Official right there. He can't see it. Nobody can, can he? After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down. So a first down for Virginia Tech, looking to tie things up here before halftime after a first quarter that was a typical Georgia Tech first quarter. Possessing the ball, taking advantage of circumstances, yep. keeping it away from the opposing offense. And they built that two touchdown lead. And now Brewer and the Hokies roaring back. That was dangerous. But it falls incomplete as Chris Milton was just waiting on it, but couldn't come up with the interception. Sometimes you play DB for a reason. Milton had a chance. He breaks up this ball and comes. Look at Brewer. He's staring him down the whole time. Milton had a chance. I, I, listen, I know Bucky Hodges is six foot seven, but you got to throw it up in the air if you want him to come down with that. time for Hodges and look at Hodges go he is a long strider six foot seven on a bubble and he turns it upfield the tech had had an answer for the quick passing game too worried about these guys blowing by him they're, they're backing off too much and starting to get their offense going now the time of possession starting to swing back to normal coach Beamer told us he said I think we'll settle in at some point consider it done as this is now just dragging, absolutely dragging Brant Mitchell for a couple more yards. He got popped too, man. That's a big boy. Austin hits him. Austin goes about a buck 85, and you're going against Malik, who's almost 260. Big box car, little box car. You know who wins? Second and four. 90 seconds remain here in the half. As McMillan tries to find something, this will be close to that line to make. Virginia Tech with two timeouts remaining. Third down and one.
quarterback right up the middle first down Hokies as Michael Brewer will have a first down to work with and 66 seconds to work with so they got the, basically the timeout for the measurement to get organized and then they clock stops now to move the chain so should have a good idea of what they want to accomplish they need to be going a little faster Two timeouts, play clock down to seven. Back shoulder, touchdown, Isaiah Ford. Talk about Brewer making some throws down the field to really open up this offense and take it to the next level. Can't stop a perfect pass, some pretty good coverage on the outside. Seemed white all night with good coverage, but that's a better job by Brewer throwing the ball in the back shoulder. 15 unanswered for Vatek. Virginia Tech had two 10 play second quarter touchdown drives to tie us up here. 14 to 14. We're going to hear from Coach Beamer with Kaylee in a moment, but first, let's get you to that Land Rover halftime report. Coach, 14 unanswered points to even the score. What did it take for your offense to settle in? Yeah, well, we just settled in and uh, kind of hung in there. Everybody uh, kept their poise and uh, got back in the game. Now we got to get the second half and uh, play it. Uh, don't uh, don't get behind the uh, deal there early. Georgia Tech playing ball like you knew they would. What do you make of the way your defense? Yeah, we made some good plays. They've uh, hit us a couple times. Quarterback, uh, he's tough. He's really good. But uh, we're hanging in there. Thank you, Coach. All right. We are tied up between Virginia Tech and Georgia Tech. Two teams in desperate need of wins here down the stretch of the season to keep these bowl streaks alive. Hokies are set to return. Coleman and Green. Let's check in with Kaylee. Well, guys, yeah, a tale of two halves for Georgia Tech's offense. And Paul Johnson wanted to give credit where credit was due to Virginia Tech's defense. But he said, for whatever good they did, we did enough to hurt ourselves as well. He says, we blocked the wrong guys. We let the wrong guys loose inside. He said, but, you know, it was only five possessions. We've just got to take advantage of the opportunities we have. Well, guys, that sounds a lot like what anybody playing Georgia Tech would say, given the way they play ball. No doubt. Here's the drive chart. Once they settled in. Things looked much better. There was almost a miss exchange there as Brewer was able to pull that ball back with his left hand and then found Grant Mitchell right in his face. Yeah, Brewer doesn't run the football. If they wanted to do this, Motley would come in. You could tell it was miscommunication. I don't know how he held on to that thing, Joe. <laughs> Just one-handed it with the left hand. Georgia Tech needed, they needed something like that to happen. They, this offense has been rolling. Now you get him a no yard, you get him in the second 10 right where you need him. No, if no one's given the explanation. He's off to the sideline, and Sam Rogers is now flanking Michael Brewer here on second down. Got man coverage again on the outside with Georgia Tech. See if they press up a little bit more on the receivers, though. Sprint to the near side, and then throwing back against the grain. It was a low throw as Hodges had to come back for it, and it's incomplete. And we threw it short that time, David. Yeah, we talked about Brewer. He's, he's good in this short to intermediate passing game. Bucky Hodges tried to come back and make a play for his quarterback, but it's too far underthrown. That angle you can't see. His left elbow was in the way. It leaves him with a third and ten. But Brewer needs to put more on that. He's got to yes. throw that out in front of his receiver so he can make a play for him. Virginia Tech has converted their last four third down conversions after starting one for four on the night. 
No pressure on Brewer yet. They gotta get some, they gotta make him feel uncomfortable. They bring four. They pick it up. And that is intercepted. It's Brant Mitchell. Mitchell inside the 10. Touchdown. Pick six. The true freshman. Tech's defense struggled the whole second quarter. It was getting abused. Watch Brewer drop back to pass. Throws the ball right to the linebacker. Bucky Hodges coming across the screen. He's trying to put something on it to lead him to help him get the first down. Instead, he hits Brant Mitchell in stride. Reservations for six. What a bright future he has and what an instant impact he just made here in this second half. Butker adds the extra point. Grant Mitchell from Knoxville, Tennessee, two-time Mr. Football up there in Tennessee. But he's down here in the ATL making a pick six. And the touchdown gives Georgia Tech the lead again. Frank Beamer. Quickly looking over at his quarterback, Michael Brewer, after he threw that pick six. Here's Green on the return. Virginia Tech's offense will be back out there. Brewer gets his chance to respond now. McMillan. Good job finding that seam. A gain of nine. And I think Virginia Tech can continue to do this. They, they've run the football successfully. All week long, we've been honoring America's heroes. It's great to see Sports Center out there, the Air Force Academy, and here at Georgia Tech. They've been doing much the same, honoring their veterans associated with the university. Second and one. As McMillan able to spin for. About four yards that time before he was met by Mitchell and Gamble. And because of their personnel, with Bucky Hodges being a wide receiver slash tight end, Georgia Tech staying in nickel. And then a nickel all night long, playing some true freshman backers. That time Alexander was in there, Mitchell was in there. He just saw the pick six. Those are both true freshmen. Bucky Hodges, tight end, he, he can play receiver, he can play tight end, so it's tough to designate how you're going to treat him. You can't put a linebacker on him. You got to put a corner on him, just like right now, or a safety. This time, Malik as well is split out as Hodges comes even further over to that near side. Play clock down to three. Brewer, first down pass as he finds Phillips on the end. So what does that leave Georgia Tech with when you talk about having that personnel group in matching up with Virginia Tech? Well, they take out size, so that allows you to run the football. You bring in more safeties than, than linebackers. And so that's why McMillan can probably get his up front right now if they want to continue to run the football. But Ted Roofs, he doesn't have a lot of depth. It's hard to it's hard for him to try to match up with Virginia Tech and the way the, all their versatility they have in the, the offense. So look at Sam Rogers now, 45. He's playing tight end. He's also considered a running back. As they run to the near side, good blocking out in front for McMillan. As they were able to pave the way. We just talked about Rogers, another guy that's versatile. He plays halfback, plays fullback. This time he comes out as tight end right here. Watch him come up here to Alexander and have a heck of a block on the linebacker. Great job sealing him off. Tons of room to run. Come with the bubble to Phillips again, and he gets free, and then cuts back for a little more before he's finally found at the 30-yard line by Golden.
bounce back drive potentially here for Virginia Tech after Brewer threw the pick six moments ago. Stroman in the game number three for Virginia Tech. They like to. Here's McMillan. As he goes for 11 more yards. He's got good patience, doesn't he? He'll wait for really the blockers, does. wait for it to set up and to hit it. Conti comes back in the right guard. You saw banged up a second ago. Now he comes back in. Stroman number three comes in at the bottom of the screen. He's a jet sweep type guy. They love to make plays with him. Right now, though, keep on running McMillan. It's working. Why right? not? Come right down the field. Down to the 16-yard line with Trayvon McMillan, the redshirt freshman from Woodbridge, Virginia. Was a high school quarterback. But he has that next gear. Enough patience and understanding of what to look for up front to get the job done. He's going to have a very nice career. Sam Rogers in on second and seven. And Rogers throws and dismisses one defender away, but then they came storming in with Damon Smith. Smith, we've seen him make some collisions already. Watch him fly in there. Right here. Lower the shoulder. That's a 230 pound running back. Third and six for Beamer and the guys. Got Lawrence off at five foot nine on six foot seven. Bucky Hodges down here. Man coverage. Got to use that frame. And Ford versus White at the top of your screen. Brewer, can he get there on his own? No. It was Noble and Kyle Serge Henderson meeting up with Brewer. As Frank Beamer will send Joey Sly out into the field. Sly, a semifinalist for the Lou Groza Award. 29 yard attempt for the sophomore from Stafford, Virginia. As he drives it through, Hokies get points out of the nine play drive. The boys were back in town. Bobby Ross and that 1990 national title team for Georgia Tech and Ralph Region, the offensive coordinator. George O'Leary was the D.C. and Sean Jones and William Bell and Scott Sisson, the team that beat Nebraska in the Citrus Bowl and claimed number one spot in the coaches poll as they are celebrating 25th anniversary tonight. Bud Foster has been loyal soldier as a defensive coordinator for many years. He was long viewed as the heir apparent, told us, I know they want me at Virginia Tech. I just don't know in what capacity. Whit Babcock, the athletic director, has taken the attitude of let's celebrate Frank Beamer, not detract from the experience for the kids of trying to have a winning November. Uh, ESPN's Joe Shad has noted that Arizona's Rich Rodriguez is open to a move back east. Of course, he has a close relationship with that pop going back. And then Justin Fuente, a name you hear. Chad Morris, a name you hear. And Tom Herman at Houston. But obviously, this is a program that is in really good shape, has the facilities, has the tradition. And he's looking to extend a bowl streak if they can find two more wins. And I think all those names come up for a reason. They're all offensive guys. When you think about Virginia Tech over the last years and years, you've thought about Bud Foster and great defense. I think the next hire, we usually when you, when you go away from what you have, is to find somebody a little bit different and find an offensive identity and a pulse and somebody that can really coach up offense. All those names represent that. You know, Scott Leffler, the offensive coordinator, said whoever does come in is going to walk into something really, really good with a lot of the young talent on Virginia Tech. We hopefully have a really, really good fourth quarter coming your way. It was a pick six to open up this second half for Georgia Tech. 21-17. You're watching the ACC on ESPN.
Joe Tessitore, David Pollock, Kaylee Hartung with you here with the Jackets and the Hokies, the two most frequent teams to appear on Thursday night football since this package began back in 91. 31 times for Georgia Tech, 30 for Virginia Tech. Thomas, and he overthrew Ricky June. And Ricky June, since that first possession, really hadn't been a factor. He's the guy on the outside that He's kind of come the go-to guy. We talked about it. Two guys left last year to the NFL, and Justin Thomas has been trying to find somebody to have a connection yeah, with. Yeah, Michael him. Summers quit the team. Yeah, just quit, which was shocking, too. And then June just kind of stepped up, and he needs to make some plays. He's got that big frame, six foot three on the outside. You see, it's no secret. He's getting man coverage. They're starting to throw the football more. Maybe he needs to make some plays. Had a 58-yarder on the opening drive of the game that set them up for their first score. Third and eight, Thomas again to pass, and he gets it out of the backfield to Snotty, who gets the first down and gets it all the way out towards the 40-yard line. And they run the ball so much, and now they play action. You're with you. You better watch Chagog. Anthony Chagog rushes the passer. He's got man coverage on Snot. He lets him go. He goes right by him. So many things to look at in this offense. Great job of mixing in the screen game by Paul Johnson. Give them an opportunity, and you're going to see plenty of that. It was Marcus Allen again. Can't have had the face mask that was the first down. Guys jumping off sides. Make both foster. Second and four. That time wrestled down by Nigel Williams was Allen. It's Michael Brewer. Every so often he stares up at that clock. It's 11:38, counting down and trailing by four, and wondering how many chances will I get? Can Bud Foster and that defense give them the stop they need? Here's another chance. Third and two. forward and will have the first down. This is just where Georgia Tech's offense wants to be right here. Have the lead, fourth quarter, they can run the football, two, three yards of pop, keep them in the chains. We showed Bud Foster earlier, man. There's not a, I don't know there's many people that don't feel sorry for him over the years about the offenses they've had. He's winning 20 to 17 games, 24 to 20 games. Never really played, especially the last several years, with a great offense. He's had opportunities to leave through yep. the years. He was so loyal to Coach Beamer. And Bud Foster's defense comes up with it. 20 seasons as the sole defensive coordinator, and he would like nothing more than a win for that man on this retirement tour. How about it? Forcing another fumble. Edmonds on the outside. We talked about him earlier in the game. Not setting the edge, not turning the ball back inside. Daddy Nicholas makes it go outside. Edmonds gets his hands in there. Another fumble caused by the Virginia Tech defense. Watch Daddy Nicholas, number 90, right there in your screen. Just absolutely destroy the freshman, Will Bryan. He does his job, makes the ball bounce outside. Edmonds. Edmonds Gets his hand in there for the strip, and then Big Luther, Matty hustling from the inside out, man. And Bud Foster jacked up. It's Roger Snotty, who's been involved. Look at who's your daddy, Nicholas, turnovers. right there, man. He did a great job. Luther, Matty with a fumble recovery, and now a golden opportunity. A little misdirection here with McMillan. As this Hokies offense has a chance. Kelly. Well, guys, Bud Foster fired up, and Georgia Tech's defensive line coach, Mike Pelton, he was fired up too, telling his defensive line, let it out. He said, Brewer's giving us time. He wants the big play. You got to rush the passer. See if they get their chance to get after him. For now, they keep it on the ground with McMillan, who was stacked up at the line of scrimmage. 
last possession was the first time I thought they, they got a pass rush. And disrupted Brewer a little bit before that. It's been easy, but now it's not about a pass rush right now. It's about third and short. Knuckle it up, getting physical at the line of scrimmage right here. We've already seen Virginia Tech throw it in third and short a couple times tonight. I wonder if they'll do it again. Third and two for the Hokies. Brewer sprints far side. And that was thrown beyond Isaiah Ford. They roll the pocket and they try to make it easier on Brewer, and he's got to see this. Isaiah Ford is wide open right away. This route is designed to pick route. It's designed receivers at the top of your screen. Great job. Cam comes hit it off, now. picks it, throw the football. It's wide open. Move the sticks. You only need two, three yards. Those are the kind of plays you can't leave on the field. Fourth and two with Hughes on the field. Georgia Tech may play punt safe here. And he's able to turn that one over. As it bounces at the five and then does go into the end zone. 926 to play. Both teams desperate for wins to get to the postseason. One of the most respected head coaches of this generation, Frank Beamer, 277 career wins, and recently announced he will retire at the end of the year. Great show of respect by the Georgia Tech fans and the administration pregame. And there is a ball out there, and Virginia Tech feels as though they have it. As Daddy Nicholas celebrating with his defensive teammates, it was Woody Barron who came in and forced that fumble. And Woody Barron does a great job. Watch him, number 60. Look at him play the cut block. Push the ball down and then strike the running back and force the fumble. And Big Daddy Nicholas jumps in there on it. Goodness gracious! Look at that! Look at the play to cut. Come off and make a play. That's that's unbelievable. How about this Virginia Tech defense? Just three fumbles now in the second half. Consistently getting the ball back to their offense. Three fumbles forced in the last four drives. Paul Johnson's got to be going crazy. But Virginia Tech failed to convert on either of the previous two fumbles yep. by George Tech into points. They had three and outs the last time they were in a spot like this. You have to crash through the door at a point like this now. 9-18 to play. Prime field position. McMillan blockers in front, hurdles over, and gets inside the 15. And it feels like they kind of give up on the run game a little bit. They've been able to run the football. McMillan's had a Heck of a night so far. He's got 120 yards rushing. 21 carries. Red zone, the field shrinks a little bit. You want to give him some touches and then maybe find big Bucky Hodges, number seven, that mismatch that they like to use down here in this part of the field. Number He's seven. in that too tight formation yep. on the top of your screen, just off the line next to Ryan Mallett. Six, seven tight end that can really run. Second and seven. They go to the boundary with Rodgers, the big burly back, and that doesn't offer up much at all. As Francis Callen was able to make the tackle. Brewer's got to come up. Brewer's got to make a play for his team right here. He threw a pick six to start the second half. Missed some wide open guys deep. He's got to make a play for his squad. Third and seven. Big moment for Brewer. And the flag comes in from every angle as Lawrence Austin, the nickelback, was all over him. Pass interference, defense number 20. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul and automatic first down. And we first talked penalty about in Georgia Tech. It's so hard to, I mean, think about that body. It's six foot seven. It's hard to go get around him to get to the football. So 
decides to go through him, and Austin, Austin knew it. He knew it right away, but Bucky Hodges being that big, that's why he's such a good target to get it to. Here's McMillan. He's able to find just a little bit of room at the end of that to the four-yard line. It'll be second and goal from there. away to McMillan who takes it right in Virginia Tech takes the lead first lead of the night for Frank Beamer and the Hokies and we've talked a lot about Bucky Hodges being a receiver receiving tight end and being outside the box this time they bring him in across the formation and watch him throw a block it's a great job paving the way and McMillan continues to have a great game now he's over 130 but Virginia Tech ground game starting to wear down this Georgia Tech defense. And Sly misses the extra point. The snap was bad. Watch this. It was low and on the ground. Holder tried to get it up and offer it up to Sly. But it threw them off. A wobbler. Still should have made it, Joe. Agreed. Let him off the hook. This is a goal for a touchback. Here's Thomas. Thomas. That had no chance. It was low with Chagog trying to make an effort for it. Feels like Georgia Tech's gotten a little bit pass happy, and I understand why they've been struggling a little bit with fumbles, putting the ball on the ground. It's been a struggle for them to get the chains moving and find an explosive plays. The middle's been locked down. Luther, Maddie, and company on that inside. You saw the big play by Barron a second ago. Got to get to the perimeter or pass. Second and ten as Thomas spins to the outside. Nobody there but himself. As they brought everybody around to the right. Thomas went to the left. Big drop, big block by Aaron Joe. The right guard. Watch him pull to the left side of the screen. This is a counter. Look what he does. Oh, get some. It's Justin Thomas on the perimeter. Deion Clark, number 40, didn't really like that that much. Third and one now. Two-point margin after the missed extra point attempt. As Thomas looks over, Brad Stewart's to the top of your screen. Run these receiver. down several times, Joe. They sure they have. Well, they like to stay true to their identity. Going to pass here. And dropping it that time. That was Marcus Allen, who leaked out, was open. And Yellow Jacket fans dejected. And all the struggles to get the running game going and Justin Thomas to have time to throw the football. He finally has time and throws a perfect strike. That's <sighs> one Allen probably wishes he could have back. Hits him right in the hands. This is Stroman from 35 as he wiggles his way out towards the 44. Trayvon McMillan. As he goes for three yards. And this is where it gets critical for Tech. Georgia Tech. To get a stop. They're, they don't have the best two-minute offense in college football. They can't throw the ball. We've seen them struggle in the passing game. They can't let Virginia Tech chew up three minutes of this clock and have to burn timeouts. Now you've seen Virginia Tech slow the tempo down. Bill's had a big night. He's already got 135 yards. His defense has to bow up. 
get their own the ball back with plenty of time left. J.C. Coleman, number four you see there behind Michael Brewer. He has come in here on second and seven. Been a steady contributor. And they will go with Coleman to the near side. Gain of maybe a yard and a half. It'll bring up third down from there. We haven't seen Coleman tonight at all, nope. have we? He was the MVP of their bowl game last year. Had 157 yards and a touchdown. Ted Roof, defensive coordinator for Georgia Tech. He needs this stuff. He's got man coverage across the board. You can see everybody's locked up on a guy. Play clock is inside a three. Here's third and five. Incomplete. He had two receivers in the same area. Big Bucky coming on inside. You can see Cam Phillips up top doing the same thing. I don't know who the ball was to, but either way, if Bucky catches that, he's a yard short. No, well, if it's the Bucky, he threw it far to the outside of the intended target. And now there's plenty of time for Georgia Tech in the offense, but that's why I would I would have ran the football and relied on my defense. But either way, you get to punt and rely on Bud one more time to get you a stop. A.J. Hughes on to punt. If he can get this ball off in less than two seconds, he should be fine. That's exactly what he did. 2.0 right on the mark. Now here's what happened with Joey Sly, place kicker for Virginia Tech. Missed the field goal and then was impacted by a burn wormer of a snap that still got down by the holder and that's why we have just a two-point lead for Virginia Tech 40-yard field goal is one thing an extra point is unacceptable it is unacceptable especially when the holder does that good of a job on a snap like that this Virginia Tech defense has shut out the Georgia Tech offense here in the second half as Matua Puaka comes up with another tackle. Three and a half minutes to play. Georgia Tech and put they put themselves in position. Up, they've been calling, they've been letting it roll down every time. Here's Thomas being chased. He tries to get to the edge, but he ran out of real estate. Crowd wants a flag there. As Dion Clark came in on Thomas. And another bonehead play. After the player was out of bounds, personal foul, late hit, number 40. 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. It's just unnecessary. I don't know Frank Beamer shaking his head, but it's... It's a bad play by Deion Clark. He runs down and Justin Thomas stops. You can tell. He doesn't lay up. So out to the 44 yard line. As we're coming up on three minutes. Thomas wasn't much room and somehow he got positive yardage. And how big is that now, Joe? Because you're just looking for field goal range. You got four downs in this offense. Time's not a factor. That Next guy thing. is a factor. Harrison Butker, he's been outstanding in pressure spots. Had a game winner against Virginia Tech last year. Don't Career have long is 53. He's done that twice. That's the 36 yard line in terms of line of scrimmage for this offense. Second and seven now. Thomas, oh, and he retreats as Nikanum was pursuing. Great job by Clark on that play. He made the, he's the one who got the personal foul from the sidelines. Did a great job staying home on the counter option. Now you got him where you want him. This is, this is four down territory, you know that, but. So you can still run the football, but this is where you want this offense is behind the sticks. Third and 11. 
for Justin Thomas and the Yellow Jackets. As out of the backfield is Willis. And a first down for Georgia Tech. It's the freshman in the back end, Alexander. Adonis Alexander on the right side of your screen. In the middle, he's got man coverage on the back out of the backfield. Look at 36 in pursuit. Took his eyes off his man. Paid attention to the quarterback. Big time freshman mistake. And hit that. Big at that time is Allen. As you can see, that green line as they're closing in on field goal range of Harrison Butker. Frank Beamer nervously awaits. It was his special teams who couldn't connect on the extra point attempt moments ago and now just trying to hold on to the edge of the cliff of a two-point lead. Coming up on a minute to play, second and five. Thomas, that exchange wasn't clean and he loses yardage. This will be marked at the 40. First guy in was Matua Puruka, and a flag comes in late, and then Clark finished it off. And all the personal fouls and mistakes Virginia Tech has made this game, Georgia Tech just gave one back to him. Aaron Joe, number 75, looked like he absolutely shoved somebody after the play. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 75 on the offense. 15-yard penalty, the down will count, third down. Horrible decision in such a critical spot. And I understand Chuck Clark's pulling up the football and he's near your running back. Just let it be, though. But you got to let that go, man. You are in field goal range in a great situation. You have to be able to keep your composure in those spots. And, man, you just made your offense, you put your offense in a bad spot. Even with the loss there, if he just kept his cool, they're still knocking on the door. They're still in good enough position for Butker to give it a go. With two more downs. Now they're past midfield. Man. This is what happened last year as Georgia Tech was trailing, entering the fourth quarter. And Butker hit the 24-yarder as time expired. Stormed by his teammates. And what he would do for the opportunity now. Third and 20, Justin Thomas. And he is brought down. Can it can him? All over Thomas. And a can did a great job rushing the passer. Number four, the left side of your screen, getting around the corner. Looked like he almost got a face mask right there. He just grabbed his helmet. Daddy Nicholas was coming in on the other side. And how about this? Bud Foster's defense, that was not a face mask, he just tapped him on the helmet. Bud Foster's defense steps up again. Haven't given up anything this second half. Shut him down. But two of the better players on this defense is Kenna Canham and Daddy Nicholas, number four and number 90 on the edges. On the outside right here, these guys right here, how do you block them? They got a long way to go. As Virginia Tech will try to keep him in front of them. Thomas. They only brought two against him, and it is incomplete. No flags to be seen. And Frank Beamer is looking up at that scoreboard and say, I think we can manage 43 seconds to victory here. As his wife Cheryl knows how much this means to her husband. 29 years deep into an amazing career with the Hokies. One went closer to his 23rd consecutive bowl appearance, which is the longest streak in college football. North Carolina and at Virginia Tech remains. Excuse me, at Virginia for Virginia Tech. And the other side of this result is the bowl streak for Georgia Tech and that being extinguished they came in at three and six they needed to win out 18 straight years of going to a bowl 
for Georgia Tech. Frank Beamer and everybody who has reached out to him, including Bobby Ross, who was honored here tonight, the old Georgia Tech coach who won a national title. When Frank was asked what meant the most to you, that was one of the first things he said. Bobby Ross wrote him the greatest letter. And there have been so many in the past couple weeks, and there will be many more as the retirement tour begins with a win. Well played and entertaining, and drama till the end. His defense did the job in the second half. Virginia Tech now five wins, looking for six for Coach. 23-21, Sports Center is up next.